Uh, my name is Barbara Lamb, and I'm a licensed psychotherapist, specifically a licensed marriage and family therapist. And I'm a certified hypnotherapist and regression therapist. So my work encompasses all of those different aspects, which keeps it very, very fascinating for me and hopefully helpful for the people I work with. Well, I became licensed as a psychotherapist in 1976. And at that time, I hadn't been aware of UFOs or extraterrestrials. Um, I just thought subjects like that were probably quite interesting, but were science fiction. That's what I thought at that time. But I began to do some of the deeper work, which I call it. In other words, um, regression work and uh, going into the subconscious mind more uh, to bring forth information from people that seemed to explain uh, some of the things that they were feeling and dealing with in their lives. And then in 1982, I visited a friend who had a home up in the mountains in Southern California, where I am. And um, while I was waiting for her to change clothes or something, um, I looked at a coffee table book that she had sitting in front of me. And that book really opened up my awareness. If the book was called UFO, Contact from the Pleiades. And I had never seen such a thing before. And while waiting for my friend, I opened the book and it had the most beautiful photographs of UFOs. And it had passages of information, actually quotes, the book said, quotes from beings from the Pleiades planets. And these beings seem so high-minded and loving, incredibly unconditionally loving. And they were talking about us human beings as being regarded by them as their little brothers and sisters, and that they were coming to Earth to help humanity. And so I was reading this material and seeing these beautiful photographs and reading also that the photographs had been highly analyzed by experts, you know, who can detect which pictures have been faked and which ones were real. And the verdict on that was that this was real footage of these UFOs. Well, just in the 20 minutes or so that I was looking at that book and reading portions of it, I just felt enlightened. That is, I just felt a big radiation of light within me and a sense of wonder and a sense of thrill. Like, this is wonderful. There are these very intelligent, loving beings out there in space who are visiting and who care about us humans. Well, that was about all for that particular incident because my friend was ready and we went off to do whatever we were going to do that day. And I remembered that book. I kept thinking about it. And it took me about 12 years before I could ever find a copy of that book and be able to purchase one. So that was in 1992. And then in 1994, uh, having had several uh, episodes of what I would call spontaneous past life recalls when visiting other countries, and I began thinking, you know, it must be true that we have many lifetimes. And I had never really considered that as part of reality before that. But when I came back from one of those trips, I had the very good fortune to meet the woman who had founded the Association for Past Life Research and Therapies. And that woman uh, sort of casually um, interviewed me 
and realized that I was doing some of that very deep relaxation work and part of my therapy practice. And she said, you would be a natural for doing past life regression therapy. Well, I didn't even know up to that point in 1984, I hadn't even known that there was such a field of past life regression therapy. But as synchronicity would have it, um, they were holding a conference on that whole subject beginning the very next night. And it was only about 30 miles away from me where this conference was going to be happening. So I, with some interest and curiosity, I went to that conference and I met so many excellent professional therapists who, as part of their practices, were doing past life regression therapy. Well, I became very impressed and inspired. And then when this group offered training to become a past life therapist, I signed right up. And that was the beginning of about five years worth of training that I took to be a past life regression therapist using that as part of my therapy practice. Well, the very last module of training, which was in 1988, the trainer, head of that particular program, said to us, those of you who are doing regression therapy could possibly have it that sometime a person would come to you who had had very unusual experiences in this life, and they might have been visited by some very strange, peculiar beings, and maybe even removed from where they were for an hour or two, and they might be confused, uh, startled, even traumatized, uh, at least very curious, and that they might want regression work to help them to over uncover the details of those experiences that they hadn't been consciously remembering. So I heard that, and that was really a surprise. I had never heard of that before. And so I was startled. But not only that, but even more impactful, that there was a big voice in my own mind that said, pay attention to this, Barbara. You will be doing this, doing regression therapy for that kind of reason. Well, I was absolutely amazed, and I was having cognitive dissonance, which is where we hear a new idea as if it's true, and it really counteracts whatever we had thought about that idea before. And so I didn't know what to do with that. And we went on with the last, the highest level of past life training. And uh, so I just kind of tucked it away in my mind that I wondered, I needed to find out if there really were UFOs that came, even though I had seen those beautiful photographs a few years earlier, um, and, and if there was such a thing as extraterrestrial beings and such a thing as their visiting people here on Earth and taking people away for certain experiences. So I found myself learning about that, you know, going to um, every lecture that I could hear of that was being given in Southern California anywhere and, and reading articles if I could find them in magazines. I know I was going all over many different towns looking at their magazine shops to see if I could find any articles about that. Well, finally, about three years later, in 1991, in the shower one morning, which is a good thinking time and not interrupted by anything, um, I concluded that if anyone should ever happen to come to me with that concern, wanting a regression to some sort of very unusual experience like that that they had had, I concluded that, yes, that would be okay. I, I feel like I'm ready to handle that. 
if it should ever happen that someone would come to me for that. And as life, as synchronicities often happen, about two hours later, I was in a metaphysical bookstore. And the woman behind the counter said, oh, aren't you Barbara Lamb? Don't you do uh, past life regression therapy? And I said, yes, I do, quite a lot of that. And um, she said, well, I wonder if you would agree to meet with my 21-year-old daughter. This is not about previous lifetimes, but right here and now for years, she's been experiencing nighttime visits by very, very unusual beings. And she feels that sometimes she's been removed from our home for a couple of hours and brought back. And unfortunately, she is terribly afraid. She's been traumatized and she does everything she can to stay awake at night and to sleep as long as she can in the morning because she's afraid to go to sleep, afraid that some sort of encounter like this is going to happen. So um, having just decided two hours earlier that I was ready for this, I said, yes, I certainly would be happy to work with her. That was a tremendous opening for me, working with that young woman. And we had six regressions, six sessions with one regression uh, in each session. And she certainly seemed to have a variety of extraterrestrial experiences with somewhat different kinds of beings coming to her for each one of these incidents that we did the regression to recount all the details of. And, um, and some of them were very frightening. Some of them were more interesting than frightening. And one of those regressions involved an experience when she had a very bad earache. And the beings on that occasion came to her room at night and they turned her on her left side with her right ear where she had a fierce earache um, heading upward. And she was aware to some extent in part of that experience is that these tall white beings, uh, no hair, big eyes, very different than human beings, were right there working on her ear. And they were healing that very intense earache that she had. So that when she woke up in the morning and got up, she realized, wow, my earache is completely gone. And it must have had to do with those unusual beings who were here. So there were things like that that were happening. Um, right among the more peculiar, unusual sorts of things that she was experiencing with some of the beings. Well, that last session when she came in, she came in looking happy and relaxed, and, and she launched into saying that she felt privileged, she felt honored to be chosen somehow for some reason by those beings that they would be working with her. And that she had concluded she was happy about it. Well, I, as the therapist, was really surprised by that because I hadn't heard anything positive about that phenomenon up to that point. So this was a real turnaround. And she said, um, I'm honored to be working with them, honored that they have chosen me, and my boyfriend and I are going to move away from my parents' home. We're going to move out into the wilderness in the mountain area in back of where I live in Claremont, Southern California. And I said, well, that's wilderness territory, you know. And, she, and so who knows what could happen there. And she said, I know, that's just fine. And even my boyfriend is open to the idea that if these beings come into the room at night and take me away for a while, that's all right. So she had also had an experience before that last visit when she and her sister had been driving along, uh, sort of at dusk outside of the regular town that she lived in. 
And they both noticed that there was a blue beam of light coming in the back window of the car. And they realized that it seemed to be coming from um, sort of semi above them. They also then were aware that uh, the car motor started to sort of peter out and slow down. She pulled off the road so the car would be safe. And they both were startled, of course, and they jumped out and hopped over a low fence and ran through the field that happened to be right there next to the car. And while they were running through the field, you know, to get away from this beam of light and whatever it was that it was emitting from, um, my client, the 21-year-old, suddenly realized that the beam of light was hitting her lower back where she had been having a considerable amount of pain for quite a while and had not been able to get any help for that in her life here on Earth. But the beam was touching that area, and it felt so good. So she stopped running while her sister continued running away. Um, but she stopped and, oh, sort of just received it and bathed in that wonderful light while her back was becoming less and less painful. And um, so she just opened up and received it. So by the time she came in a few days later for her session with me, um, she was radiant, literally, radiant, glowing, happy, relaxed, so pleased, and said, I know that they are here to help me as well as to do whatever else they're here to do. And that's why I feel so privileged and honored to be part of this. Well, that was a great beginning for me in doing this particular kind of my therapy work. So I went off to England a month or so later to do my annual crop circle research and didn't think too much about that. It was involved in what I was doing. And when I came back again to America and to California, um, I noticed that another lady was calling and signing up and saying, well, I don't know how you feel about this, but I've all of my life I've been having very odd experiences, and I usually remember just the first several moments of them. She described there on the phone uh, that three little beings would come into her room at night and take her away for a while. They always brought her back. And she wondered what was happening after she was taken away because she didn't consciously remember. So she wanted to do regression work as well. That woman, the second woman, stayed and worked with me many times for 11 years. And she had many, many regressions with me, probably 60 or 65 regressions. Some of our sessions we, we talked, and some of the sessions we did regressions, and in some she did channeling of an extraterrestrial being who said that he lived on the binary star system of Antares. Well, to my wonderment and absolute appreciation, I was the one who got to talk to that extraterrestrial being through her channeling what he was saying. And when this channeling would happen right in my office, it felt like the whole energy of the room was literally changing. There was sort of a soft, warm, glowing energy feeling. And I've just felt so opened and so relaxed and yet thrilled to be talking to this intelligence coming through my client. So he gave a lot of information about what we tend to call the encounter or the abduction phenomenon, and a lot of information about the extraterrestrial's perspective about humanity and about life on Earth, 
I really had my perspective of everything, of reality itself, stretched and opened and changed. And it was thrilling. I, I was aglow after every one of those sessions. So that was all part of it with that second client. And she had in her regressions experiences with many different types of beings, and they all had different agendas. So putting that work together with the regressions of the first client I mentioned, um, I began to get this impression that there, are, there is a wide variety of beings that come from different parts of the universe, and they all have uh, different agendas. They do different things with these people. And some of the things that some of the beings do are not liked by people, and I can understand that, uh, particularly physical checkups and implants being put in and some reproductive processes. On the other hand, there were many, many beings of different types, I'm sure from different places, that were doing wonderful things like physically healing people and teaching them things, even training them in being more psychic, training them to communicate telepathically, which we don't usually do here, or at least no one I know does talk telepathically with other people. But we apparently all have that ability, and some people get trained by these extraterrestrial beings. So uh, they're trained in lots of different skills that some of our people, like psychic skills, do have, so we know it's possible for human beings. And yet they'll take these new people who are experiencing the extraterrestrial contact and opening them up to those particular skills. And very impressive to me uh, were the situations where people would be taking who already had a serious uh, physical ailment of some sort, or perhaps a congenital problem, perhaps a long-term illness, autoimmune disease, a heart problem, cancer, um, all kinds of really difficult things. And they would, the ETs, would heal people of these infirmities. And they would do it quickly in one session. Well, that was really impressive to me. So this work has gone on of regressing people to extraterrestrial experiences for 25 years now, uh, with many people coming. By now, um, I have regressed at least 1,300 and 50 individuals to the details of their extraterrestrial encounters. And then some of them have lived close enough to keep coming back for more regressions. And it's about 2,300 individual regressions to extraterrestrial experiences uh, that I've been privileged to uncover so far. People continue to come, so that number will continue to grow, but that's how it is at this particular point. So with all that, I feel just completely privileged. And I feel that it is one of the main reasons that I came into this lifetime from all the past life therapy work that I was trained in and have learned and conducted all of these years, well, really, that worked since 1984, um, I've certainly gotten the perspective that we are, all of us, ongoing, continuing souls, and we do, from time to time, uh, come into different incarnations. And then we return, as we die, to that pure soul form. And the soul form is always with us, of course, as we're here like right now in a lifetime. Uh, but And that soul aspect of us, which is really the truest aspect of us, can retain all the other lifetimes, 
all the other dimensions that we have lived in. So I think that many of us, maybe all of us humans, I don't know, but I do that, know that many of us have had previous lifetimes as other kinds of beings living in other parts of the cosmos, on other planets, or even as other dimensions. And then, now and then, we come into the physical form as a human being living here on planet Earth. But we are so much more than that. And yet, no doubt, millions, even billions of people living on the Earth nowadays and forever before this, you know, think that this is it. This is all we get. This, this one life that we're very involved in now is all of the reality of us. My own husband uh, felt that way very strongly, that this is it, and that was perfectly okay with him because he'd had a very nice, long, interesting life. And a couple of months before he died a year ago, we had another conversation about this, and knowing that it probably wouldn't be too much longer that he would be living because he had very serious heart problems. But, um, and I said, what do you think, you know, after you leave this physical life? And, and he said, well, that'll just be it, that, that's all. And I said, you mean you won't, you think, have any awareness or any thoughts of, of anything after that? And he said, that's right, that's, that's what I think. And I said, well, how is that for you to feel that way? And he said, oh, that's just fine. I've had a long life, an interesting life, and a lot of love in it, and you know, wonderful children, and our relationship, and done really interesting, fascinating work, and I've been very blessed, really, and, um, and that's fine, that's enough. So he did die a couple of months after that, and, um, and I've really had such an interesting time myself, along with the great loss, of course, I've had a very interesting time, time picturing what he must be experiencing, feeling sure that he is very conscious and very aware as a continuing soul. And he's visited in a couple of ways that let me know that he is, quote unquote, alive and well in the spirit form very conscious and very aware of being there and visiting here. And I think that this is all part of the extraterrestrial human phenomenon, in the sense that they too, the extraterrestrials, are ongoing, continuing souls who incarnate on different planets. I've had some clients who um, in their regressions have found out that they were a particular kind of being, which we call extraterrestrial, on another planet. And we go through certain features of their lifetimes as that particular kind of extraterrestrial being. That's a very interesting perspective. I'm so grateful for that. And some of them have um, started out with one regression being a particular kind of being on a particular planet. And then, um, during one of those lifetimes, they decided, next time, next lifetime, I'm going to incarnate on another planet as another kind of being that they had heard of and get to experience what that's like. And then, sometimes, in that between life, very conscious state, they decide, okay, now it's time to incarnate on this very strange planet called planet Earth and to be <gasps> a human being because we're really quite strange to them. Probably we are stranger to those beings than they are to us. And when I first came across that sort of idea, that perspective, I mean, I almost laughed. Well, I never thought of it that way. 
And then I began to realize through these last 20 years or so that, you know, all of our peculiarities as humans and how wonderful we are, some of us, <laughs> in many ways, and also how dysfunctional human beings are in some other ways, and certainly more aware of this whole pattern of pugnaciousness and competition and avarice and, you know, trying to beat each other out and take each other's resources and how war seems to have been going on on this planet as long as there have been intelligent beings living on it. That's not true on all the other planets. And so the more that I've learned about life on the other planets and the type of mentality and spirituality that many of these extraterrestrial beings have, the more I think, wow, I mean, I love us human beings. I'm one of them. And, you know, I'm comfortable here and I like being here. But wow, when you look at the whole human species and the whole history of human beings, <clears throat> we have a lot of flaws. We have a lot of problems. We're pretty dysfunctional in a lot of ways, as well as our wonderful points. So this whole field of work is really expanding and enlightening for me. There's also a very spiritual aspect of the whole thing that all of these different life forms in the cosmos, humans and what we call extraterrestrials, um, we're all ongoing spirits. We're all spiritual beings who just take up different kinds of lives in our lifetimes and different forms and different mentalities, different consciousnesses. But we're all part of the whole. We're all part of it. 